Hi, uh, welcome to this week's edition of Learning Space. Uh, I am Nicole Gallucci. I usually have a lower third, but I seem to have lost it. There we go. Uh, with Cosmo Quest. Uh, and I am joined by my co host this week, Pamela Gay. Hello, everyone. Hi. And uh, later we'll be talking with Tim Bailey all over there. <laughs> Wave hello about Yuri's night, Hi. but first uh, we are going to talk to Matthew Francis, who has joined the Cos Cosmo Quest Cosmo Quest team uh, for our education, our online classes, and you have a, a, a announcement for us. Yes, uh, we are we are offering two classes to begin this month. The first one begins April fourteenth, and that's going to be. Uh, uh, that's a class on the uh, the sun and stellar evolution. So it'll go through the process of star birth all the way through star death. Um, a lot of us are familiar with Carl Sagan's line about how we are all star stuff. Well, this class will tell you exactly how that works. You know how we go from a cloud of gas to the stuff that makes us. Um, so that class begins on April 14th, and I'll, I'll put the links to the, the class signups on uh, the event page for this, uh, um, this program. Awesome. Um, and the second class will begin on April 23rd, and that is a cosmology class about the universe as a whole. So here's the universe. Um, <laughs> and the, so all the, all the stuff that we've been talking Talking about everybody's been talking about today about dark matter that's going to be in this class the stuff we talked about a couple weeks ago about the Planck satellite that's going to be in the class as well so how do we know what we know about our universe and why is all this stuff a big deal so that begins April 23rd and so I hope uh, you'll be interested in signing up and hope you'll join us and, yeah. and, and the one thing he was too nice to admit to is he's it, it's our own doctor Matthew Francis, who is writing a book on cosmology right now, who's teaching the cosmology class, and uh, Ray Saunders, dear astronomer, he's going to be teaching the stars class. So you've, you've got a great chance to have great communicators who do this for a living, uh, not just communicating, but teaching you so that you can communicate for yourself what it is that makes mm -hmm. you and what it is that makes our universe tick. Yeah, and they run through uh, private Google Hangouts, and, and uh, I know we filled up the last class and actually yeah, had a waiting list last time. Eight people, limited so. to eight. Uh, yeah, so uh, we have them listed at cosmoquest.org slash classes, uh, and then from there you can go to the Eventbrite links where you can actually register for the class. And those, that link, yeah. those links will show up very shortly. And you never know when Pamela and I will pop in. in That's class. <laughs> that happens too. I mean, and sometimes we don't know when we're going to pop in either. Right. It's just a right. random, hey, let's pop in. Let's pop in, yeah, answer some questions. Uh, I, saw, I think I saw, went for the final projects for the last yeah. class, and I, I really enjoyed that. So, cool. So, so line up. you're going to see Matthew also up in our Friday Space Hangout. So, yeah. we'll be back yes. then. All right, talking cool. about planet eating black holes. Who doesn't want to listen about that? <laughs> nom nom nom, maybe <laughs> in the uh, description. Awesome, yeah. awesome, cool. Well, thank you for, for coming and giving us that, that uh, plug for the classes. Um, thank so you. They're really cool, so check it out. <laughs> and um, I want to remind everyone watching that if you uh, want to comment or ask a question anytime during the show, uh, please use the, uh, you can, several ways you can do that. You can leave a comment on the YouTube page where this is broadcasting. We can see that. You can comment on the events page on Google+. Uh, that is also where I'll be posting in real time links to anything we talk about um, that we want you to go check out. Uh, the YouTube stream will also have those links put in it later on. And uh, Twitter. If you're, if you're watching anywhere else and want to use Twitter, use the hashtag learning space and we'll see that as well. So we'll try and get all your questions answered. And, and I'm laughing uh, So we have with us this week, we have Tim Bailey, who is on the board of directors for Yuri's Night. And he might be frozen. Or I might be I was frozen. muted. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi! <laughs> no, my computer just froze. Freak out. Oh, no. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, when Yuri's night is, there's a countdown. It is there eight is. days, five hours, 54 minutes, and three, two, one seconds. What? Let's start with the basics. What is Yuri's night? Oh, please don't remind me. It's so close. Um, 
We've got so much to do. It's so exciting. So Yuri's Night is an annual global celebration of human space flight. Uh, some people got together about 12 years ago and decided there wasn't a really cool way to celebrate space. Uh, we didn't have Space Week back then. There were no uh, just really fun ways to do things. One thing I love about CosmoQuest, and uh, I know I saw you guys when you were out at the uh, South by Southwest Festival, and you were having a great time out there in the James Webb Space Telescope tent, and you were just having fun. Yeah. And that was something that didn't really exist around space exploration. Space exploration was noble. It was uh, adventurous. It was very... Uh, scientific and rigorous and you know you had to kind of look up whenever you talked about space exploration it wasn't as approachable and fun and people said look we love to dance and we love music and we love space why can't we do them all together so they planned to hold one party in LA and uh, their friends got wind of what was going on and said can we do that too why don't we just all do it at the same time and have it on the same day and they picked April 12th which was the anniversary of the first human spaceflight by Yuri Gagarin, hence the Yuri's Night. And it also happens to be the exact same anniversary as the very first space shuttle launch. So we have April 12th, 1961, and April 12th, 1981. So in 2001, 20 years later, they started the very first Yuri's Night. And so now we have parties all over the planet, and off the planet, actually, uh, every year to celebrate the the past that we've had that was so amazing, the present that we're living in that's so exciting, and the promise of our future out in space. And anybody can participate. Yuri's Night is an open source project, so you can take our logos, take our music, take our name, and create a, a, an event anywhere you want and make it look any way that you want it to, just to celebrate Yuri's Night. Just the same as you would do with St. Patrick's Day or Valentine's Day. Go and celebrate Yuri's Night any way you want, just as long as you're celebrating space. Yeah, we, we're actually here. Well, poor, poor Nicole will be on travel, but uh, Georgia Bracey and I, we're going to be going out to our local custard stand, Annie's Custard. And uh, it's, it's, we're a small town. It's one of the places that people gather. And we're going to take our telescopes, take some space memorabilia, and lure people into thinking about space while they get sticky fingers all over our optics. But we can <sighs> clean those later. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. That's what I love about Second Yuri's year, night I'm is that there's it. so many different things. <laughs> well, yeah, there's there's um something I, I'm looking at your ticker on the website. There's 214 parties going on around the world. What so is far. the range so far? What is the range of part kind of parties that you have lined up or have had in the past? Oh my goodness. Uh, as, as far as in the past, we've had a hip hop concert with 10,000 people. Uh, we've wow. had yeah, we've had black tie dinners. <laughs> Uh, to, as fundraisers for um, museums and, and science centers. We've had college students watching space balls in their apartment uh, with three people <laughs> and a case of beer, you know, if they were of age. Um, or, or, you know, a case of root beer. As grad, the, students, as as grad students, right? <laughs> grad students. Uh, you know, and I, I've, I've been to a middle school where we sat around and built small Estes rockets and we yeah. got a presentation from a... Uh, an engineer from one of the major aerospace companies and that was something that one of the middle school kids moms put together she said I really think this is important that the kids get uh, excited about space exploration yeah. I want to do this how do I help uh, so it's rain it runs the gambit from the largest event you can think of uh, I know here in DC we're probably gonna have two to three hundred people in a bar called science club uh, funny enough uh, and so we'll be out there doing Lego spaceship building contests. We'll do oh. some trivia. We might have some talks going on. Uh, and we'll just pack out this bar and transform it into a huge conversation about space exploration for the evening. That's Pretty awesome. Cool. Is, has there been a way to track how many people are celebrating, or is it just so huge that you haven't been able to track that? Is it just like... We do some post-event surveys. So there's a global team. Okay that does uh, the coordination of the website. We're all volunteers, and we get together and make sure that there's a website. We make sure that there's that ticker, uh, a list of parties. Mm. We're still working on revising our party map. Um, and we make and your sure new that... website is really good. So if, if oh, you haven't you. been to Yuri's Night for it's a while... It's shiny. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, it, it made me suddenly think, oh, crap, must do better web design. So <laughs> thank you for raising the bar on all of us. It's a really sharp site. 
Thank you, thank you. It's been a long time coming. Uh, Jason Cranford Teague, who uh, is, a, is an amazing web designer, he put together some of our older sites and has put the, the front end on this one as well. We've also just redone our entire back end, the Mission Control Center, where you can go in and if you're a person that wants to do an event, we give you the opportunity to register that event for free in the Mission Control Center. Uh, go in and add your own party details. If something changes, you can update it, put yourself in the list of parties and someday uh, on a map where you can actually see everybody uh, and where those events are going to be located at. And we've just redone the entire website top to bottom. We had somebody build us an entirely new back end. Uh, the original code was written in 2004, I believe. Oh, wow. Custom built in PHP, so it was just getting to be hard to maintain. Yeah. Uh, and so we've we've been rewriting that, so that's taken a lot of time and energy and volunteer hours uh, to make that all happen. So it's great to hear that you guys think it's shiny and new. Sometimes I'm worried that we're past the, the bleeding edge. We're like the pre-bleeding edge. But, uh, but so things don't always don't work have, out. Yeah, no, it, it's shiny, and you're right at the bleeding edge, which means that you can just sit back and do awesome things instead of web design for a while. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. But we really wanted it to be something forward-looking, you know, yeah. if, if there's a future out there, let's make sure that it's that, have a responsive design that's uh, going to work for a lot of people, be really something neat to make them think, uh, but hopefully also be useful and, and give people the opportunity to explore what Yuri's Night is about, give them uh, access to a lot of the resources that we have. There is, if you look up on the top of the Yuri's Night page, there's a bar, and one of the tabs is resources. So we have music that people have licensed to us that's free that you can uh, oh, download cool. and play. We have a whole bunch of uh, playlists if you go to YouTube where you can find greetings from uh, astronauts, from the administrator of NASA, from all kinds of people. Uh, Bill Not a Science Guy is in there uh, that have sent greetings to Yuri's Night participants, uh, including last year uh, and the year before and the year before. Many years we've had greetings from space. Uh, all the way back during the space shuttle era, uh, we had um, plenty of greetings from the space shuttle and from the International Space Station, uh, and it, it's been phenomenal to see the aerospace industry and the astronauts grab onto this and say, this is so exciting, we want to do it. Excellent. Um, they, they've done videos for us outside of their actual um, scripted time, let's mm -hmm. call it, where, where PAO has them do specific things for people and agrees to that. We got in a little bit of trouble strangely, because the uh, PAO got a, a, a downlink of this Yuri's Night video they weren't expecting, and they called <gasps> us up and said, that was not something that we had approved, you need to clear it with us and not go around PAO, and Whoopsie. we looked at them and said, what are you talking about? And they said, well, there's this Yuri's Night video, and we were told to give it to you, and so I assume that you worked around us to get them to do this. And we said, <gasps> No, they just wanted to send us a video, and they thought it was cool. Uh, everybody can celebrate Yuri's Night any way they want, especially yeah. in their off time. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, they probably have to add a disclaimer. You know, this is all my personal <laughs> time. All three minutes of it I'm allowed on the space station. <laughs> Um, exactly. Yeah, I just, uh, so one of your colleagues, Ryan Kobrick, has just added a sneak preview of the Yuri's Night map in the comments on the event page, so if you're there, oh, wow. go check that out, that is appeared to not be live yet, or <laughs> 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 not finalized, but he's sharing the sneak preview with you guys if you're watching. Um, so it's, it's, it's eight days away, and you said there's so many events so far. Is there still plenty of time to, to schedule an event, plan an event? Oh, yeah. We've got more than a week to go, and actually uh, it, we've graphed out, and we know we're, we're on track to break at least break 300 events this year, which would be the most we've ever had registered on the site. Uh, yes. I believe that's the most that we've ever had registered on the site. Um, a lot of times people wait until the last minute and don't know what they're going to do, or they find out about Yuri's Night late, and so they wait to, to register their event until the very last minute, um, which is fine. You know, there's, there's no requirement to register a, uh, an event to have it be a Yuri's Night party. We just like to have that data back there so that we can tell people, look, this is a growing phenomenon. People all over the world do this. Typically, we get all seven continents. Somebody knows somebody that's down at the, at the South Pole, yeah. and they can... Uh, sort of get in and they'll do a toast down there or play Star Wars that night, you know, uh, um, on the they movie screen. They need to find a meteorite on your behalf. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> we would take it. I don't know where we would put it, but we would take it. <laughs> 
but but one of the things that's so awesome about this is this is a volunteer love affair where it's it's people of all walks of life of all educational backgrounds celebrating the fact that we are a spacefaring society we don't make it very far but we are a spacefaring society and it, it doesn't require corporate sponsorship it doesn't require tax dollars it just requires someone with an idea on a street corner with a card table and a rocket or a picture or just their own voice sharing our love of space and that that's a powerful way that we can make sure that people still realize we're still going to space NASA is not dead we we still have astronauts up on the International Space Station that's right uh, people ask a lot of times how do I do a Yuri's night event what do I need to do a party how do I start and my answer is always, you start by registering an event. You plant your flag and say, I'm going to have an event here uh, on this day, on this time, or even I'm just going to have an event. And it starts from there. People will find you, and they'll say, really, I want to I help out too. That sounds like fun. What are you going to do? Are you going to have this? And your answer can be, yeah, let's have that. You know, are we going to have music? Of course we'll have music at the custard stand. Are we going to have <laughs> telescopes? Yes, let's yeah. have telescopes at the custard stand, you know? That's how Yuri's Night events happen. And then all of a sudden, people the next year will come up to you and say, so when's that Yuri's Night event happening? <laughs> I really like that telescope last year. I got to see a planet. I don't know if you've ever seen a planet. I got to see one with my own eyes through a telescope. <laughs> You know, the first view is free, and so is the second, and the third, and all the views after that. Collecting photons is somewhat addicting. <laughs> it is. But it's, it's a great gateway drug. <laughs> totally. I say that all the time. Astronomy is a gateway science. Yeah, we all do. <laughs> Once you get people excited and give them a personal interaction with science and with space, they're hooked. Once yeah. you get people to start looking up and thinking bigger they're going to keep doing that. You, it's it's going to be a recurring thing. And it's fun to now go places and hear people say, well, when's that Yuri's Night event? Or when are we doing this thing again with, with yeah. space or with science? And they're not what I would consider science people. Mm -hmm. they're, they're the average person that has gotten infected with the bug and now just assumes that it happens all the time and we're yeah. going to do it every day. Yeah. Sure, why not? Because we do. We yeah. Do. yeah. So what, do. What, how did you catch the bug? How did you get into this? I met one of the co-founders, uh, Loretta Whitesides now, uh, at flight attendant training. So one of the things that I do uh, part-time is I am a parabolic flight attendant. So cool. Which means that yeah, I get to float around and help, help keep other people safe and do all of the safety briefings that the FAA rec uh, requires for people that are going up on a parabolic flight, which is where a plane climbs and dives and climbs and dives. This is called the Vomit goes. Comet. I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it, I want to do it. We don't call it that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, but that's what the military calls it. <laughs> NASA's, NASA flies a much more aggressive uh, pattern than what Zero-G will typically do. Like, if you wanted to come on board and just come on as a regular person to come on and buy a ticket and have a good time, yeah, no problems at all. We're going to take it easy. We're going to have fun. We're going to play with water and M&Ms. <laughs> when NASA has you on board, they are in it for business. I mean, they're like, yeah. Cut, yeah. The, cut the fun. We're here on taxpayer dollars. We've got to get some work done. Yeah, and it's so, experiments. Oh, man. They Climb high G, hard. drop you. <laughs> yeah. It is, it, you're there for the experiments. I would, yeah. totally, I would be like, no, let's go faster, harder. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the worst passenger ever. <laughs> it is really amazing. It's, it's super fun and a great group of people uh, that are the nine of us that are the flight attendants there. Mm -hmm. um, we need two on every commercial flight, so it's a it's fairly small population of people that gets to do this, which is yeah. great. But I met Loretta doing this um, through Peter Diamandis of X Prize fame. He was one of the co-founders of uh, Zero G and had met George and Loretta and a bunch of people and brought them in to, uh, to see if they wanted to be flight attendants. And, uh, of course, we all said yes. On the way to being an astronaut, I'm willing to be a flight attendant. That is fine <laughs> with me. I can point at doors. Uh, you know, and and Laura already has her prepaid pass to space. So, I, yeah, you guys are on your ways to being astronauts. It's kind of right? awesome. And we've got a lot of experience now. So I met yeah. Loretta, and she. this was back in 2004. So Yuri's Night was still pretty small. Um, 
not very well known, and you know it was, it was an extremely small group of people back then too. And she said, "Oh, we've got this neat thing that we started up called Yuri's Night, and it's a space party." And I said, "That sounds amazing. Let's have one." Uh, and threw one together in about two months or something at the Orlando Science Center, and uh, learned a lot about how to market events and how not to market yeah. events. Mm. Uh, and said, okay, this was really cool. I want more, but I want it all the time. And yeah. so she said, come join the global executive team. We work on this stuff all year long to make sure that when April hits, we're ready for it and people have what they need to have an amazing Yuri's night. So I've wow. been involved ever since. We spun us out into a, our own independent 501c3 so that we could uh, do whatever we want during the year. And it's been a fun ride. I can't, I can't imagine being anywhere else or doing anything else that would be this much fun. That's that's just awesome, and you're you're such a neat group of people. You you all have so many different things that you do in your lives, and then you just have this. You're party planners, as this add-on footnote to all the cool stuff that you do. It's yeah. it's strange that we have to be responsible for making sure that the world can host Yuri's yeah. Night events, <laughs> and then also, you know, while I'm worried about whether or not uh, our five hundred one c three paperwork has been put in for this and do those things, oh. Do we have Legos for our DC event? I yeah. don't know. Who's working on that? <laughs> oh uh, so definitely both levels of, of emotion there. And and speaking of the team, we do have an amazing team of people, and it changes all the time yeah. as people have availability and, and can come in. So um, when anybody that wants to can join the Yuri's Night team. You can host an event, and you can just do your own event. But after Yuri's Night, if you feel that urge and that itch to get involved or especially if you see something on our website that really annoys you because it doesn't work correctly, mm. please, please consider coming in and fixing it for us. Uh, we'll give you the keys <laughs> to the kingdom. You know, we've got college students, high school students have, have been on our global executive team. We do outreach. We, uh, you know, go after sponsors. We mostly go after fun. Uh, it's just, if you feel like you want to make a contribution, come in and do it. Well, we're always happy to have new people that are enthusiastic and, and ready to make a contribution to letting the world celebrate. And, and what's kind of awesome is because this is in April, it's part of Global Astronomy Month. So this is just one more notch on an entire month that we're slowly, it's not like anyone's certified at Global Astronomy Month, we just took it. We made it our month. And that's how Yuri's Night started too. We, we get national holidays for all sorts of things and we make national holidays and international holidays for space. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, we have a couple questions. Oh, wait, your, your um, audio is muted, I think. Can you hear him, Pamela? No, I didn't hear you, Tim. Your audio ate itself. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no, freak out. Um, so so Jim Sky, is that the one you're looking at? Yeah, so, so we have a couple questions. One is from Jim Sky asking if there's a map search for the closest event. And uh, there is a find a party link on the website. Uh, I don't think there's a map yet, but if, if you go to the Google event page for this right now. No, right, we, hear I hear you, you, we hear you, We hear okay. you, we hear you. Yeah, um, so you can find a party on the website. As for map, can you fill in on, it looks like that's coming. That is coming. That's one of our uh, most popular features. Mm -hmm. uh, although over the years, it's gone from a hard-coded map to a Google map, um, which Google was gracious enough to actually uh, give us an, an overlay of the Earth at night to put onto the map. I see oh, that. Wow. That's they, pretty cool. Yeah, and, and, the, that was and the little amazing. bubbles have, are, are, are the little illustration of the logo of Yuri's face. It's a little Yuri head on there, which I think they, they added into regular maps too, but uh, giving us the world uh, at night map was just... Uh, if I didn't love Google already, I do more now. Um, <laughs> so that was really amazing of them. And that's something that we've been working really hard on. I know the back-end API has changed on their end, and yeah. we've just been moving to this new system and trying to figure out how to link it all together. And uh, the technical team has been working really hard to get that back up and running, in, in addition to a thousand other things that you know break when you, when you do something new and different. Yeah. So um, we're really working hard to get that up, and I'm hoping that in the next couple of days, we'll have the map live with all of the events and all of the information on there so that you can just zoom right in on your hometown and see the gazillion of Yuri's Nights uh, events that are going to be happening all around you 
Or if not, you could start one. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. If you zoom in and there are no Yuri's Night events happening anywhere near you, you can start one. And uh, we do have the option to say that it's a private event. So you can say, I'm having Yuri's Night, but it's private. You don't want just random people showing up. Or that it's a public event. And, you know, if you don't want to have it at your house, pick a Starbucks to go to or, or pick a local A eatery, custard stand. Or a custard stand that you could go to <laughs> and just declare it a Yuri's Night. You don't have to get the establishment's permission to do so, although sometimes they really like it too. Well, uh, yeah, so so like Annie's where we go, they they have a board where they advertise normally the, the flavor music of the groups, week. the flavor of the week, <laughs> and one of my favorite moments was looking up and seeing that they had announced our Yuri's Night event up on their sign with the giant letters, so people were like, what is this? And so they're coming in, they're buying custard, they're looking through telescopes, so it was a win both for our organization and for the business. And it's a great way to support a small mom and pop joint who's completely willing to, to help you host something fabulous. A lot of people are, are willing to help out if you just go and ask. They're, yeah. they're completely open to doing that. Um, I like to say that Yuri's Night is a platform for whatever you want. It's not a program where we dictate what you're going to do with it. It's a platform for whatever you want to do. If you're an artist and you want to do an art show, absolutely that's a Yuri's Night event. If yeah. you're a musician and you want to put on a concert, that's a Yuri's Night event. If you're a parent and you want to have a play date with your kids and let them make, you know, Play-Doh moons, yeah, that's a Yuri's Night. You know, whatever it is... If you want to promote your local astronomy club or your, we got you know somebody that said they were in a Star Trek fan club and they were going to be out doing uh, you know stuff with the fans, the 501st. Um, oh, yeah, the 501st Stormtrooper Brigade. Brigade. Yeah, they go out and do a lot of things and, and support your A's Night events too. And we're happy to have them at any event, anywhere, come out and promote your thing, whatever it is, yeah. you know. It's, Very cool. Yeah, I see you guys in the resources. Speaking of, I, I love kids' space activities. There's a Pinterest board full of really awesome activities. So I'm going to add that link as well um, and suggest people check that out. Uh, it's, it's a Pinterest board. Just search for Yuri's Nights Kids and uh, all these, these pinned activities and articles, uh, which are really cool. We've been working on increasing the availability of the resources, and mm -hmm. uh, a lady named Dee from Canada actually said, man, I have a, t I have a toddler. And I want to do Yuri's Night activities, but I can't find any. Do you know where some are? And yes. I said, you know what? I have a toddler, too, and I don't know where any things are. Let's go find some. And so she started the Pinterest board and uh, collected all the things together, and we stuck it on the resources page. We love when that kind of stuff happens. So now she's our early education uh, resource specialist at Yuri's Night. So if Very you need a cool. really cool title, do something and come to Yuri's Night. We'll give you whatever you want. That That's Absolutely amazing. We also have a Master of Electrons. Uh, we have a Director of Awesome. Seriously? Okay, Pamela, Cosmo Quest needs cool titles, too. <laughs> oh, wait, I'll post talk with the most rock. You are. I think I'm the only Rocks. You more. have rocks. I... <laughs> okay, we're going to skip that. They're called Mercury, oh. Venus, and Vesta. Uh, Mercury, Vesta, and the Moon. <laughs> We have um, another question from Samer Hariri uh, asking, can events be hosted online? For your Absolutely. Uh, we actually typically have at least one that's in Second Life, and we've been doing some outreach into other uh, online persistent communities like World of Warcraft. I know there's a Starfleet multi massive multiplayer online game. So yeah, I mean, you can hold it as a hangout if you wanted to do a hangout. Um, I believe Space Vidcast is going to be having a webcast if you want to watch other people and have your own Yuri's Night watching other cool people do fun stuff. Um, or you can do it inside of a game, any way you want. There's no wrong way to have a Yuri's Night. Ooh, so speaking of no wrong way to have a Yuri's Night, Ryan <laughs> asks if there's an official Yuri's Night cocktail. Ooh. Have you come up with an official cocktail yet? or, or is Other than just the shot of vodka? No, I don't think that we... <laughs> There are a lot of great drink recipes out there, and depending on the environment that you're in, um, you know, it, it could be that you're making fruit punch for kids at a middle school. It could be that you're at a bar. Tang? With a tang, yeah. Uh, tang and alcohol do not go together, in my opinion. Um, really? But tang and tang go together just fine. You can have tang at school, and it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a little too orange. Okay, Ryan, this is up to you guys at Mad Art Lab. <laughs> to come, come up with one and tell yeah, us about it, and we'll, totally. we'll promote it, yeah. 
All right. Um, I, I expect that's your homework. <laughs> and it needs a name more creative than Buzz Aldrin because that's over here. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's already done. <laughs> yeah. We've got a great uh, feature that will be coming online in, a, in just a couple of days, just in time for people to start celebrating, called Yuri's Night Live. And it's a live blog posting feature where anybody that's hosting an event can go in and post live updates or, or after event updates with notes and pictures and videos. So if you do come up with a cool drink idea, go to Yuri's Night Live and stick it on there, including some pictures of you having the drink so that we've got all of that <laughs> captured and we can show everybody, this is the drink that you should be doing at your bar. Excellent. That's, yeah. I, I love... There, there's so many holidays that are all about the little kids, and there's so much education and outreach that's just for the kids. And adults need to learn and celebrate, too. Give me my space. Not my space. Timberlake, we love you, but no. Um, <laughs> so so this, this is great that people are finding creative and sometimes alcoholic ways to educate people and get them thinking and laughing and enjoying that we have a universe to, to, to learn about. And to celebrate. I mean, that's the... It, a lot of times when we talk about education, uh, it, it tends to be very formalized. And, well, what are your objectives? And how do you yeah. get um, that... What's you your know, evaluation plan? What are your metrics? Yeah. Oh. And you're trying to push something onto people where, you know, oh, I need to push all of this information out to you. And... From Yuri's Night, we appreciate that, and there are a lot of education programs that get hosted around Yuri's Night at uh, museums, science centers, schools, and that's great. My objective with Yuri's Night is always to give people a safe space to just experience science and the amazement of space, where a musician and an astronaut can talk together about things they have in common, yeah. on a common ground, where neither one is more important or cooler than the other. They can just be in awe of each other and talk about things like, so how do you play the guitar when the guitar doesn't hang off of you in space? You have to sort of float with it there. How does that work? Or um, NASA roboticists talking with uh, some artists from Burning Man. I know that happened out at Ames when they brought a bunch of the large Burning Man installations out, and I, wow. I heard that the the scientists there were a little skeptical at first, and they started talking to these artists about the coding that they had to do to make these things work and how all yeah. of the pressurization systems worked and the ones that were shooting fire out and their safety protocols and, and realized that when you're taking a large-scale installation like, like some of the Burning Man apparatuses that they had out there that were yeah. mechanical and had all these moving they're parts, amazing. and you put them in a dusty environment like the desert at Black Rock, you've sort of simulated taking a robot like to Mars. Yeah. And you need some of the same coding and programming <laughs> and independence of, you know, having things work in a tough environment. And they really gained a respect for each other that wouldn't have naturally occurred. We had to bridge that gap with something. Yeah. And we bridged the gap between all those communities with Yuri's night. And, yeah, it, it, it's absolutely amazing just we all have our own creative outlets and space isn't just for the people who got a perfect 800 on their math SATs. Um, space is, is something that can inspire philosophers, writers, poets, and scientists and theologians and there's, there's no limit to, to who can be inspired by all that's up above our Earth's atmosphere and the fact that we're up above our Earth's atmosphere periodically. It's kind of awesome. Sometimes we do uh, leave home base and come back and look at it. I don't know if you heard the song that Chris Hadfield wrote about... Um, they debuted it. It was with um, one of the guys from Bare Naked Ladies. And they oh, co-wrote yeah. a song and debuted it from the International Space Station. Wow. And one of the lyrics was... Uh, oh, if you could see our nation from the International Space Station you'd understand why I want to get home soon. Because it's so gorgeous to see the planet. And I've never met an astronaut that yeah. didn't come back with a better appreciation for Earth. I know a lot of people look at it as, you know, going out into space. But everybody I've ever met said, it's great to go out into space. And as soon as I turned back and looked at the planet I came from, that was the only place in the universe I really wanted to go. And, and I, Don Pettit's imagery, if you've never gone out and looked at them... 
he he has spent vast amount of his personal relaxation time on the International Space Station, taking imagery of sunrise, of cities, of storms, of lightning from space. And this change in perspective is, is heart-wrenchingly beautiful. I know when Ron Guerin was up, he started the Fragile Oasis Project to, yeah. to promote that same type of uh, thought process, that we, we really do live together in a tiny little oasis of life in a vast, vast void. And we should probably think about taking care of it together versus fighting over it independently. Yeah. And so that's part of what we do with Yuri's Night, too, or that's what you can do with Yuri's Night, is use it as an opportunity to get a global perspective and to promote the overview of Earth as a, as a whole system not as just a bunch of little countries that they show you on a map on the news. Because that, that map is fake. I don't know if anybody ever told you that. <laughs> Somebody drew those lines there. It <laughs> yeah, doesn't actually exist in real life. Shocking. It's so true. I, I, I can't find it now, but I came across a video from LeVar Burton on your website. Do you have any other super nerdy fun <laughs> uh, celebrities that have been taking part? <laughs> All kinds of them. Uh, yeah, that was really cool. We had um, somebody knew somebody that knew somebody, and all of a sudden, we get this video of LeVar Burton with a Yuri's Night t-shirt on going, you should register an event! And that my mind just exploded. Yeah. Between Star Trek uh, and reading Rainbow, he's like I my know. favorite thing. Yeah. So. <laughs> he's so cool. Well, like I said, we have Bill Nye the Science Guy uh, that was uh, that's d done several videos for us. We've had... Um, Charlie Bolden and Lori Garver, who are NASA's administrator and deputy administrator. So uh, that was really cool. And a really well-produced video, too, by the way, um, that they did for us a couple of years ago. A lot of them from the 50th anniversary of human spaceflight that we had mm -hmm. in 2011. So that was a, a good year for us. Uh, cosmonauts, astronauts, private space explorers. I know um, we've had... People like Richard Gary at Speak at Events. We've had Dennis Tito and Anusha Ansari. So, um, so for those who don't know, these are all space tourists, individuals who have taken the training and paid their dues and without having to apply for the astronaut corps, got to fly, in, fly into space on the Soviet technology, Russian technology. That's right. And so it's really great to have their perspective, uh, the perspective of, of NASA astronauts and Russian cosmonauts and... Um, We've had people from all over, from ESA, come in and, and talk, uh, actually, and, and do events out in Germany or other parts of Europe. Fantastic. Uh, to have them come in and get to talk about these things is always great. But then there's something a little different about having somebody that worked really hard at something else, like video game design yeah. or uh, being an entrepreneur and a business person, and then decided, really, what I want to do is have that experience of being up in space and do all the research and the training and, and be able to go and, yeah. and come back and tell everybody, you can do it too, and we're going to take more people soon. Yeah, we're uh, in I the barnstorming era message. now. We are, absolutely. I just saw something that Spaceship Two did another glide test today, and they're, yes. they're testing all their rocket motors. Like, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, we're not at routine space travel yet, but we're seeing those first steps being taken, and I think... This is a fantastic time to be alive, yeah. to see all of this happening. What better reason to celebrate than we're about to start moving out into the stars a thousand years from now. People may not remember Flag Day. Uh, <laughs> they, may, they may not remember St. Patrick's Day. But <laughs> if, if you could pinpoint the day that we left planet Earth for the first time, when we're a multi-planet, multi-galaxy species and we're spread out all over the universe, and you know the first time you left that cradle, that's going to be a day that we'll celebrate, and that's what we'll do on April 12th. Whatever yeah, calendar system we're using. Right <laughs> Where you are. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's really important now. People are so worried about um, the future of spaceflight in the U.S., um, and so you, you, you definitely have an optimism about it yeah. that it's infectious, so that is great. I think that that's part of what this whole project is, is trying to get out there. This is really the time when Yuri's Night is needed. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it's getting a lot of momentum, too. Uh, as more people learn about it and it, as more people start to celebrate it, they start looking into things and saying, well, well what else is going on? I heard that they stopped space and, and well, they stopped yeah, the space no. shuttle. Yeah, they stopped one program. 
but that's only so that a whole industry can build up around it. You know, that's mm -hmm. like saying we don't have any more airplanes because Pan Am went out of business. No, no. We have a lot more different airlines now, and you have a lot of opportunity to go fly on an airplane. You're going to have ebb and flow in the industry, and right now we're, we're getting ready for a, a huge flow to come up. Uh, yeah. SpaceX launching the Falcon rockets. We've got uh, X-Core, Virgin, you know, a whole lot of people coming out. Blue Origin with their secretive space program. Um, it, it's so many different things that are going on right now. When parents talk about their kids not being able to be astronauts, it blows my mind. I've, mm -hmm. you know, I've NASA people, may only hire four or five people at a time, rarely, but Virgin Galactic, x -Corps, all these other companies, they're looking for test pilots, they're looking for future astronauts, and they're looking for mission scientists. The, the yeah. future is bright. It's just the number of employment opportunities has gotten spread across multiple companies, which is a new paradigm. It's just something new for people. We've, we've quit having a program. We've started having an industry. And that's going to take a little while to, to really percolate through people's brains and get them to, to see it that way. But I, there is going to be more opportunity for kids today to fly into space than there has ever been in the history of humanity. This yeah. is a wonderful time to be alive. This is exactly when your kids need to be working on being an astronaut because it's more available to them than it was to us. I mean, yeah. My daughter could do lunar habitat interior design, you know, or she might do low gravity art installations that can't exist on Earth. Maybe she'll do... Oh, that'd be cool. Who knows what, you know? I mean, and w once we have colonies on the moon and Mars and other places, we're still going to need people to cut hair, uh, to take out the trash, to do the cooking. I mean, I love talking with somebody while they're cutting my hair. Oh, you like space? Well, that, I'm just <laughs> not that smart, you know, or I come from Georgia, so I'm not... Anyways, um, not making fun of any one type of person that cuts hair. But I often talk to them and say, well, so who would cut my hair if I was in space, living uh, like on the moon when I retire? And they'll stop and think for a minute. Well, I don't know. Who would cut your hair? And I said, well, I hope it's not me. Yeah, and I hope right? it's not the scientist sitting next to me because th no. they're probably not going to be very good at it. Uh, would you like to move to the moon when I retire? Because I'm going to need a trim. Uh, and it sort of blows their mind to think of themselves yeah. as part of humanity being needed out, out in the stars. And Yuri's Night is a great time to sp start up those conversations and talk to people and go to your local hair salon and have a Yuri's Night there. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> well, I'm going to be at a, at a meeting of, I'm going to be at the National Science Teachers Association meeting in San Antonio. And I just took a look at the Find a Party page and I don't see one in San Antonio yet. So even though I'm traveling, I feel like I have to go ahead and... <laughs> Pick a place and That's start a party. Fixable. <laughs> we can fix yeah. that. Hey, and Jake's going, and and we know that Jake knows how to organize these things. Awesome. <laughs> we just volunteered someone who, who's at another institution because. <laughs> All right, San Antonio, you're getting a party. <laughs> Add one more to the list. Excellent. And uh, and and we've also conscripted. Uh, Ryan and Tree Lobsters into coming up there actually actively working on cocktail names in the YouTube. Uh, it's hilarious. Go read the YouTube. I would normally <laughs> never recommend this, but go read the YouTube comments. <laughs> and I, I trust those guys. They're going to come up with something good. So <laughs> Maybe an alcoholic version and a non-alcoholic version, too, so that uh, everyone can part participate. So. <laughs> and if you have any uh, Yuri's Night-themed hors d'oeuvres that you think would be good, we could use those. Um, My Oh, I have to find, um, we did, um, when I was at, at UVA, oh, Virginia, um, we would do a party for the kids at the end of the semester in our astronomy club, and we had space-themed food, and so maybe I should send that along to your Pinterest board, <laughs> because we made Jupiter and rockets and all kinds of things, so yeah, oh, we can awesome. totally do this. <laughs> the, the cake balls that you dip into the, the melted candy frosting, it's really easy to make gas giants with those. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. So I see something that I'm going to need to be doing. Yeah, you can add that to the custard that you guys are already going to have. The <laughs> frozen custard mm. you're already going to have. Planets we, I, on sticks. I think we may have one of those things somewhere that you can make those with. I think Yuri's Night DC just got some cake ball. Ooh, excellent, excellent. See, this is how Yuri's Night works. You get together, yeah. you talk to people about crazy ideas, and then you go do them. 
and it's very easy. That I don't see what the problem is. Well, and um, people don't even realize they're learning. Hey, those blue ones, that's Neptune and Uranus. The one with more white, that's Neptune. And I mean, this is how you get people talking and learning random stuff. And that's the cool stuff, usually. Yeah. Well, and then you can have a conversation about, could you make a cake ball in space? Would it work? Would it, would it, how would you do it? Would it would be so it... much easier because it wouldn't drip. <laughs> I don't know. I just destroyed my boyfriend's birthday cake last weekend, so <laughs> we're not going to talk about cake. I want to make cake balls in space so they don't drip all over the counter. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, man. Put it on the docket. <laughs> Bucket for list. The next... <laughs> we'll put it on the research flight. I'm sure somebody's got space for, for a cake ball yeah. experiment. Oh, but the energy requirements, that's the only problem. You'd have to pre-make all of the cake balls. Mm. Why? Because uh, heating elements take a lot of power, and power costs a lot of money because oh, it okay. takes a lot of weight. But if you pre-make the cake balls right before launch, they'll have just finished cooling to the <laughs> optimal temperature to frost. And then they won't be stale, but they'll be cool, and then you can cut them in the candy more readily. I thought this one through. I'm, I'm wow, kidding. you guys are seeing this live. <laughs> The, the space cake balls are <laughs> are being born. Learning space may have just jumped the shark, <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> oh man, um, I'm excited about this NSTA party. I'm gonna get online and start promoting the heck out of it. So you need to link yeah. yeah, something no, up real it. quick. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, that's gonna be amazing. I'll and help you remotely. All the teachers there talking about how to do this in their classrooms when they go back next year. Yeah, absolutely. All right, NSTA, you're having a Yuri's Night Party. <laughs> We've just decided. <laughs> awesome. Guerrilla awesome. marketing style. We are Woo! doing a party at your hey, conference. we do guerrilla science every day here. Yes, we do. A, yes, we that's do. the way to do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. So, you guys um, know. <laughs> so can you pick any one favorite aspect of, of Yuri's Night or, or working for Yuri's Night? Working. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yuri's Night. I work for Yuri's Night. And by that, I mean it's a tax write-off because it's all volunteer. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So if anybody would like to donate to Yuri's Night to help us, you know, maintain our web servers, those kinds of things. That is good. Yeah. It's, it's really helpful when we get, uh, you know, a couple hundred thousand hits at a time on a site on April yeah. 11th and 12th. <laughs> uh, oh, this yeah. year we may stay up. We'll see. Let's let's see how elastic our infrastructure is. The one thing that is the most amazing about Yuri's Night is probably the people that I meet. And not just on the global executive team, but everywhere that get really excited about the possibilities that they see for themselves in space exploration once they're given that room to breathe and just consider how amazing our universe is and what their place in it is. And then they can see all kinds of stuff that they want to do and, and go out and it may have nothing to do with space, but it gives them a, a mental breathing room to go, the universe is infinite. Yeah. Everything is so huge. I don't really need to worry about whether or not my socks match, you know, or, or did I turn off the light? It's okay. The little things I can let go mm -hmm. and go focus on doing something really yeah. cool to save the planet. Like, let's go clean the ocean or, you know, let's... Let's go save education and really get kids learning. Um, that kind of stuff happens when people are given that, that room to breathe it, that happens through Yuri's Night. And it's yeah. phenomenal to meet those people and, and hear crazy stuff that they uh, think up and then go do. Like yeah. Virgin Galactic, you know? Oh, we're going to go make spaceships for everybody. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Oh, my God goodness you are actually doing that that is yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and they're so young we've had various engineers VPs these are people who are in their 30s and younger who are doing this and so it's it's completely different from NASA where I'm considered young mid-career and I'd be old at Virgin Galactic. It's, it's a completely new paradigm for just go out and be excellent and that raises you through the ranks. It's not waiting for somebody to die and right. I love the new paradigm. <laughs> like in academia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, so yeah, I've seen some of the hangouts and they, they make me feel old. And that's <laughs> Something, so. <laughs> but that's going on all over science. I mean, there, there, yeah. we really need a lot of scientists and engineers and 
everywhere I look, uh, everywhere, people keep saying, you know, what we're really going to need is more doctors. We're, we're going to need more scientists for this. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We need some more engineers to come over and, and work on these manufacturing technologies we're coming up with. Everybody needs science and education people. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter what you're doing. Just go out and, and like you said, be excellent. It's, yeah. Wow, that's a Bill and Ted reference yeah. right there. Be, remar uh, <laughs> be remarkable. That's yeah, be remarkable. Yeah, do absolutely. the absolute best at whatever it is you want to do. And don't be afraid of having a huge goal. You know, like, what do you want to do? I want to engage the planet. And uh, maybe they could all do science. Maybe we could do distributed science on the citizen level where every citizen would, could well, contribute. What website possibly might be doing that? <laughs> And how audacious is that goal, right? I mean, if you had told yourself <laughs> 10 years ago that you were going to have that goal of engaging the planet mm -hmm. in participating directly in scientific research at a rigorous scale and, and capability, y would you have believed that that was even possible? 10 years no. ago, I was editing news for Astronomy Magazine and would never have imagined any of this. It's, I was it's still amazing. figuring out like, you know, you were like mechanics in You were college. like high school. <laughs> no, college. <laughs> thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was still figuring out Hamiltonian. Which I forgot. So it's do. sometimes I think we forget. Like yeah, you know you get caught you, up in the details. You're, you're both doing really amazing things too, you know? It's yes, there's technical pieces and did I plug in my microphone right and oh my gosh, how do I get my lower third bar to say the right thing today and what's my color scheme again? You know, and it's easy to get caught exactly. up in those all of these things happened in the pre-show. <laughs> and and we still have a show, right? And yeah. Yeah. Yuri's night, I always it's funny, people come in and they say, "Wow, where's your infrastructure and where's your hierarchy and your, yeah, no. you know, all of the formal pieces that you must need to create this global organization of uh, people all around the planet that are putting on these events and, and hosting things and websites and what do you mean there's like a handful of you that are all volunteers and you just sort of run around and make it all happen. Well, yeah, and, that's and how everything I, works. What I, I, I love is it's also taking the ego out of it because you're getting rid of a lot of the the class structure of of the intelligentsia for lack of a better phrase mm -hmm. where it's suddenly everyone can be engaged and you know if someone needs to pull out the spray paint and make the sign that's just as likely to be the most senior person as the most lower person everyone gets their hands dirty everyone gets gets involved in the proofreading the writing the communicating and it's not that there's any job that's beneath anyone. It's everyone, you're not moving, go do something. And, <laughs> and so it's whoever's hands are the most empty gets to do the task versus whoever is the correct person on the totem pole. And, and I love this new, we're all in this together. Let's just remove all barriers and everyone get their hands dirty. And that is really scary for a lot of people and, and a lot of companies. In fact, I was at the... Um, Science Festival Alliance uh, conference that they had in DC a couple of years ago. Uh, and people were astounded that we just let anyone call themselves a Yuri's Night event and use our branding and our logo. We hand that out freely mm -hmm. and say, if you want to go make shirts with your logo on it, you know, and, or you want to put a, a, you know, alien ears on Yuri or, you know, like put him in a Star Trek, you know, whatever you want to do, that's fine. Yeah. It's open source, it's creative commons, it's uh, crowdsourced to distribute it. None of those words existed when, we, when Yuri's Night was started, yeah. but that was the whole concept was Yuri's Night belongs to the world. It's yours to do with what you want. It's not our brand. I mean, to a certain degree, we have legal responsibilities about Yuri's Night, but right. beyond that, we keep that as low as possible and, and outside of the purview. Of just go do something fun. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if it's been amazing to watch what people can do when they really have ownership of an event and of an idea that they can participate in fully and they're not beholden to us, you know, and somebody says, well, what do I do to host a party? Tell us that you're going to host a party and then go do whatever you want with it. Yeah. And that's perfect. That's amazing. I can't tell you what's going to work best for you and your friends and the people that you want to engage and what you want to engage them in. So don't, don't look to me. Go and do it. I, I know at the International Year of Astronomy, there were certain events that when we heard about, we were like, wow, 
there, there was like a traveling exhibit on the back of a camel. What? <laughs> <laughs> that I that will be with me for the rest of my life. Has 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 there been any you hear about someone somewhere in the world doing something so awesome and yet so just un you couldn't have if someone wrote it in a fiction story it would have been too unbelievable to be published. Uh, well, definitely when the crew of the International Space Station sent down pictures and videos of them, they were all wearing Yuri's night shirts and they had a picture of Gagarin. And, you know, we have three different nationalities of crew members up there all talking about space exploration yeah. and what it means to them. And that we didn't think we were getting that. And, you know, they put on their Yuri's Night <laughs> and sent down this video. <laughs> that was fairly amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. I've seen toasts that were done outside at the South Pole uh, where they would go out and they would uh, very quickly, uh, you know, do a cheers and talk about exploration and the fact that they're explorers and they're living on the frontier just like the people... Uh, going out into space and living on the frontier of space. Sometimes the most amazing are the smallest events. Uh, I know I love events that are big. Uh, in the Bay Area in San Francisco, they've had these huge events with thousands of people around them. Um, you know, there have been big raves in L.A. There have been parties at the Encounter at LAX, at the Seattle Space Needle. Um, but some of them are, are really the, the coolest ones are the little parties that I see, where it's somebody that baked a cake, uh, and had some friends over, and they exposed this whole group of people very intimately to what they were passionate about. And I yeah. think that's very brave and amazing. When I hear about, you know, 3,000 school kids at, at a small school in, in Africa somewhere, and they're all talking about space and astronomy for a, an entire day. Yeah. And, and to give you some perspective, <sighs> for a while there were no universities in sub Saharan Africa that offered astronomy. Mm -hmm. And so this may be the only exposure that teachers, anyone gets. It's, it's really remarkable. Sri Lanka, last I looked, had one professional astronomer. Mm -hmm. So Yuri's Night has this amazing ability to fill in mm -hmm. and reach out in ways nothing else can. And make it fun. <laughs> that's, that's what I always come back to with Yuri's Night is there are a lot of really great events and a lot of uh, amazing opportunities for learning. And I love those and I want those to be leveraged. I want Yuri's Night to be fun. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I almost don't care if we get a lot of learning done because if you engage people and you give them a fun way to interact with something, they're going to start pulling it towards them. You don't have to shove it out at them. They'll start pulling that and say, so all of those images that you had up on the video of, of like those weird colored cloud things with the bright, what were those? You know, and they'll come back to you later and you can, oh, those are nebulas. That's where in the universe stars are born. Yeah. And die. Stars get born and die. I don't yeah. understand. You know, like, yeah, on yeah. this huge long time scale, this is how things happen. Mm -hmm. Who are those people? Those are astronauts that are orbiting the planet right now. We have people in space. Yes, yeah. we have we have six people in space. Sometimes nine, uh, you know, that are in space doing work right now. And not just what about that, that weird stuff. Yeah, you're re-energizing the people who are the base who are already in it too. Like yeah. I may be working in astronomy day in and day out, but you know, the one day a week I was doing activities with third graders was like so much fun. It made me feel yeah. like, oh yeah, my job is awesome. Um, you know, you you kind of need that. The, Yuri's Night can re-energize the whole space community that does this every day anyway and, and, and let them have fun with it. And, and I have to say, I am so loving all the drink ideas that are going by on my screen. <laughs> every time you see me looking over here, it's because I see the drink ideas flowing past and the food ideas flowing past. And I'd encourage you to actually go over to the CosmoQuest.org forums under the community link and let's start collecting all those drink ideas and we will actually publish those on our blog um, and help get this out as a way to toast in humans advancement above the atmosphere. So bartenders so. in San Antonio get ready. We're gonna have some <laughs> weird drinks for you. <laughs> and, and I will be uh, probably sticking on the CosmoQuest much neglected Pinterest uh, information on making uh, cake planets. Ooh. Thank you. Uh, please do post a link because I will go and find that. Excellent. Yes. Uh, and then we'll, t you know, Yuri's Night is a great time for anybody that's out there. Uh, you may not have the opportunity.
opportunity to set up a computer and do CosmoQuest stuff, but you can at least start talking to people about it when they say, mm -hmm. wow, space is so cool, but I don't know what I would ever contribute to it. And to say, well, you, you can contribute directly to the yeah. science if you want. You can do the science work if, if that's what you would like to do. Help and us figure out where to go fun. land on the moon. Yeah, there's plenty of opportunities for, for people to get involved on a, a very, very casual basis in, in a lot of times. Um, you know, it's not tough. You guys have done all of the tough work of getting everything set up for people to come and participate in scientific research. I, I can't imagine why nobody else, why nobody would want to do it, you know? Well, we've um, had, you know, had five-year-olds, you know, had a five-year-old who is like happily marking craters and just <laughs> anyone can do it and that makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. And it's research that wouldn't be done any other way. I know, yes. um, Pamela, I saw you talking at uh, South by Southwest and you said there's so much data that's coming down from these instruments now scientists can't do it all. They yeah. just can't do it alone. We need everybody to come out and support figuring out what all of this data means. We need human brains working on this. You yeah. have brains that we need. So Feed us your brain. Don yeah, donate your brain to science for a little while. It doesn't matter what you do for your day job or, or what you think you can do. Come out and just try some science for a little while. Maybe you really are a really good lunar geography uh, savant, and you just didn't yeah. know it. You know, that kind of thing. So, fun stuff that you can promote to people during Yuri's night, and um, I'm sure we'll we'll put a link up to this uh, afterwards, and we'll make sure that everybody knows to uh, to go to CosmoQuest and uh, sign up to be a citizen scientist and help Yay, out. Hey, come play! Give us your brains. <laughs> Oh. Every day. You don't have to yeah. wait. For <laughs> That's right. That's right. All right. So we're coming up on an hour. So uh, I want to thank Tim for coming on the show and, and getting us all excited about Yuri's Night. <laughs> this is so cool. Um, and I also uh, I'm going to plug and thank the Mad Art Lab people who are <laughs> uh, coming up with some really fantastic ideas. So I think although we'll, we'll try and collect all the ideas we can on the forum and the blog on CosmoQuest, Check out Mad Art Lab. Um, they are go probably going to blow us away with something, <laughs> something truly amazing. Um, they uh, do a lot of the intersection of, of science and art. So, so and uh, check that their, out. Their their death by pu puppets this week was Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so so, so check that out. I think we tweeted it on all of our accounts yesterday. <laughs> Um, and our next hangout is is going to be by, by Emily Lactwala of the Planetary Society. Uh, tomorrow she's talking um, about with, coding in science. Yeah, which so, is something you know too all too well, and something that I still need work on. So yeah, <laughs> so so get get your ones and zeros on and help us, and just come learn how we get you to help us using software. Yeah, and uh, Friday we'll do the weekly space hangout. We'll wrap up all your space good stories and stuff, uh, and that's a lot of fun. Uh, it's like a little party every week on, on Google Hangouts. Um, but thank you, Tim. Uh, do you have any parting words to, to, to give to us about Yuri's Night? Well, you're welcome. Uh, I, I'm my pleasure to be here with you guys. I love what you're doing every single day. I'm happy that we get to do Yuri's Night once a year and get everybody enthusiastic. Uh, honestly, I, I'm going to be looking for your party at NSTA, so I will be checking the list tomorrow to make sure that it's on there. Um, but to let people know that it's really that easy. Just sign up to yeah. do an event and then do it. You know, Even if it's go to the bar and tell a couple of your friends to meet you there, that's fine. That, that's great. That's exactly what it, it can be. Uh, and then just you know talk about space cool stuff. Um, Yuri's Night is open to everybody. It doesn't matter how you do it, big or small. Anybody can participate uh, in any way that they want to. So I'm, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about Yuri's night. I'm so excited. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sleep tonight. That's how I get <laughs> Yuri's night. Uh, I'm gonna stay up and plan out more fun stuff to do at Yuri's night DC and see if we can open up some new locations because we have too awesome. much time for one place. Mm, wow. And stay tuned to, to Yuri's Night. Uh, Yuri's Night.net is where we'll have everything coming up, including the Yuri's Night live blog. So if you need some ideas about what to do during your Yuri's Night, that, those will start trickling in as people start having events in the next couple of days. Um, and then we've got all the resources there. So definitely go steal all of our stuff. Use anything you want. It'll be fantastic. Go out and have a party. 
get with your friends, bring your grandma. It's going to be a <laughs> wild time. Your grandma will appreciate having a cool space party, let me tell you. Yes. She's, yes. she's into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this will be, for, for me, this will be a lot. Um, I, I just remembered how I celebrated Yuri's night last year. Uh, I don't know, Paul, if you remember this. This is when that, that, that was the date my dissertation was due to my community. Oh, right. So I was madly, madly typing all night. So this will be a lot more fun <laughs> this year. But, uh, yeah, I did get to celebrate that. But <laughs> this, this year's will be more fun. I won't be typing all night. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again so much. Um, that's it for Learning Space this week. And thank you all for being with us. And keep looking up and remember this universe is ours to explore. Thank you. Rock the planet. Woo! Yay! <laughs>